Greetings of the day, everyone. I am privileged to welcome you all into the first children's edition of Orange City Literature Festival, organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation in association with GH Ryerson University, powered by Ryersoni Group of Institutions. The motive behind the fest is to explore the ways that should help students develop emotional intelligence. Exposing children to quality literature can contribute to the creation of responsible, successful, and caring individuals. There are so much when you are in the category of children. So does the literature. It is said that at the right age, you should opt for the right book. It is not just that you should read, but it is all about understanding, understanding the words, and understanding the world. So let's understand. Topic of our session is the world of children's literature from Dr. Manjiri Prabhu in conversation with Mrs. Anupama Jain. Let me introduce our speaker and moderator. But before that, I welcome you both, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. Dr. Manjiri Prabhu has a doctorate in communication science and is an independent filmmaker for television. A writer, novelist in English, and also the founder, director of a literary festival. She has directed over 200 children's TV programs, more than 50 short fiction and travel films, and has authored 15 books. Her unpublished psychological thriller novel was adapted into a Hindi feature film by NFDC, titled Chidil Ne Kaha. Her thesis converted into a book titled Roll, Read and Real has become a rare reference book for students of Hindi cinema. Prabhu has even has been acknowledged as a pioneer in India among women writers of mystery fiction and she has a diverse global fan following. She is also the first female mystery author to be published outside India and has been labeled as the DC Agatha Christie. And much recently, Prabhu has been acknowledged to be a match for Dan Brown by Dr. Shashi Tharoor. There is so much to talk about Dr. Manjiri. She has many feathers in her cap, whether it is publication, direction, awards, or recognition. As the founder director of Pune International Literary Festival, Prabhu has brought Pune City on the international map of literature and arts festival. She believes that literature feels and is a prerequisite to a peaceful society. She has recently been chosen as one of 50 inspiring women of Maharashtra and has been awarded for excellence in writing by ERTC Global Herald in Mumbai. As well being awarded the Rex Kamavir Gold Medal Award she is also an animal welfare activist promoting caring and adoption of stray dogs. At the rate, Manjiri Prabhu. Welcome, ma'am. In conversation with Manjiri, ma'am, we have a moderator for the session, Mrs. Anupama Jain. Anupama Jain is the author of When Padma Bani Paula, listed as one of the five best books of 2018 fiction. She is the co-author of 10 anthologies across genres, which of, one of which is a Limka record holder as India's first composite novel. Anupama has won multiple awards for her writing, be it the Orange Flower Award for Humor or Compressor Award for Fiction and Parental Blogging. She was listed as one of the 10 Indian women bloggers of Feminist Must Follow by Women's Web. She blogs at akaserbik.wordpress.com, listed in the Best Indian Blogs Directory 2018 under Topical Matters and Current Affairs. Anupama writes an award-winning satirical series at Redomania.com. AJ wants to know, taking on the quirky world around with its vagaries, Anupama is the founder and admin of Senior School Moms, which won the Orange Flower Award 2021 for Best Facebook Groups. She is also the head content and collaborations at Incredible Women's of India. I once again welcome you both in, the, in this children's edition of Orange City Literature Festival. Now, 
without any further delay i would like to hand over this session to anupama ma'am thank you for the fabulous welcome maria it, it's indeed a great honor and privilege to be chatting with uh, manjuri prabhu in this first children's edition of the orange city literary festival as you had rightly mentioned the right books are such uh, important devices for uh, the emotional well-being of children and uh, which will empower them to grow up into correct thinking individuals and uh, children i am very very uh, on to tell you that we will be conversing with Ms. Manjari Prabhu, who has written two fabulous books for uh, uh, the children, which in short, short time will go into a series. Uh, before I shoot my very first question, I will just give you a short synopsis of each book. The Mystery at Malabar Cottage is about four children, cousins, two boys, two girls, who go to Malabar Cottage and then there is a boy there, Viju, and they team up with the dog and there's all a mystery there along with few occupants of the cottage. It's very, very interesting. And the other one is uh, The Adventures of Mitu. It is about a naughty cat. All of us are naughty at some point or the other. And it's, uh, it's a citizen of, I mean, a resident of uh, Manaspuri, heaven. Uh, and uh, how it gets punished for its naughtiness and will it come back to its original form is the premise of the second uh, book. So without much ado, let's uh, get talking. Manjri, uh, I have very warm welcome. I hope you're doing very well today. Oh, all good. Thank you, Anupama. Thank you, Maria. It's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, I love the Orange uh, City Literature Festival. Uh, even the last time I was here, it was a good time. I really enjoyed chatting and exchanging views. So it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, children's literary uh, world is uh, the playground for science fiction. There is mystery, there's horror, there's you know all sorts of emotions that are uh, uh, you know playing there. But what do you think have made profound uh, impact as well as Indian uh, literary world of children is concerned and at the same way how have you tackled these things in uh, in your two books yeah I mean see uh, Anupama when I grew up uh, and the kind of literature I read which was mostly uh, you know in enlightened books and they kind of completely changed my life you know, I, in fact, I became a writer because of Enid Blyton and because of the books that she wrote. And she tackled all kinds of formats and all kinds of themes. So you had magic and you have fantasy and you have adventure and mystery. And she had written about everything, like school stories, you know, Mallory Tours and things like that, where you go to uh, a boarding school and things happen there. But all her books basically talked about values, you know, and uh, I think... I think my uh, set of values uh, were probably, uh, that was the first stage where I got them, where I started reading and my love for reading, everything happened through those books. I mean, I was simply crazy to the point that I used to feel I connected so well with her characters and with the books she wrote, I, I felt that I was in it light and reborn because I had to be in that in my last life and have written those books. There was no way someone else could have written that. You know, that's how uh, deeply connected I was to it. Coming flash forward to what's happening uh, currently, I see most of the books that have been written for children are uh, knowledge books in the guise of entertainment. That's that's what I see. Every book that I pick up is, you know, the history of the country, the brave women of our country, uh, science explained. It's all those kind of books, and I keep I kept thinking. Uh, that there's so much knowledge already around us. Children are growing up. Even we grew up with so much knowledge. You know, there was always something. There was television. Now there's OTT. Now, you know, there's internet. There are teachers in class. They go to classes other than schools. So uh, we as adults, uh, as human beings, are constantly playing the roles of teachers. We always want to pass on our knowledge. Yeah. You know, we have this huge yeah. experience in bank of knowledge, we, uh, especially the mystery at Malbar Cottage was written way back. I think it was probably the first book I ever wrote. And it was written when I was barely a, an adult myself. So Ooh. it was long back. It was one of the four. Yes, it was one of the first books I ever wrote in my life. And it was a breeze. There was no effort. I just wrote it. 
and that's why there are these glimpses of the inner light and lifestyle in it but I, that's fine i, mean, I simply I, love that book you know i read it in one sitting and yes. i mean an adult but i loved it yes so that's that's what so i felt that there had to be some pure entertainment entertainment in it because really all said and done at this age when i look back on all my the, my whole life i realized i just want to be let be i don't need all this knowledge i don't want to kind of sift you know from this to this this to this there's so much onslaught and you tire yourself you know trying to say i need this i don't need this so we we're actually there's too much there's an explosion of knowledge and i felt why not let children just be let them enjoy because the pleasure of reading comes from just being and sitting in a corner with a book and with maybe some uh, bhajis bhajiyas and a cup of you know something tea maybe that's that's the image that comes in my mind sit and cuddle up on a rainy morning or a rainy afternoon cuddle up in bed read a book that's it i don't want to be fed information at that point i just want to be entertained and i think that's how i have used uh, a mystery format in that book in the second book however okay which is more about me being a kind of a mature person and and still wanting to pass on some values to children because i do want to leave a heritage of good people <laughs> when i move on and and whatever i want whatever i've learned in my life i do want to pass it on and uh, the message in that book is it's a fantasy of course like you said which formats have i used and that book is clearly a fantasy because there's a magical kitten yes. who talks who does things who does magic and who comes to manas land which is of course the earth to actually help human beings understand life and be good human beings so yes i've used different formats in different books wonderful i remember the, you said values i like the way how the boy is you know loves cooking and uh, how the yes. this there's, there's always a heavy emphasis on food and how the children are left to fend for themselves i mean fend for themselves is a very strong word but they're left to their own devices i mean that's yes. simply unimaginable in these days of helicopters yes. so it is yes. a very beautiful little so uh, uh coming you. back to both the books what came to you first uh, the plot or the you know the story or uh, the characters how did you go about writing both of them so for mystery in malbark cottage it was basically just the whole thing you know yeah. it was just one day i wanted to write this book and i just sat down and i wrote it so uh, for the very difficult uh, for me to decide what came first in the books in that book in the second book however mithu we i had a cat called mithu at home uh, when i was so mithu was the second book i probably wrote after malbar cottage in my young days okay and it was a um, uh, how should i say it was a set of stories that i sent out uh, to a newspaper children's newspaper way back in the 80s and when i decided to turn it into a book i added some more but mithu was definitely a character in my own house exactly like i've described mithu golden cat brown eyes beautiful cat and i said oh god this boy this this uh, you know kitten has to be turned into a character and that's how he first came as a character to me but at the same time while i was you know thinking of all this i realized that mithu has you know cats have reiki they have this instinctive healing powers in them Uh, I don't know if you know that they do have. So if a cat comes and sit on your lap, on its own, you can you you can be sure that you need some kind of a healing. Either you're disturbed or you need that kind of um, how should I say healing energy from them, and they know it more than you. So that's the kind of instinctive healing energy they have Reiki in them. And I realized that I had to use this in some form uh, to heal the world. I mean, it's a big strong word, heal the world. but honestly what i'm trying to do through this book is basically inculcate uh, value waves let's call them value waves right. because there's no preaching it's value waves throughout the book you know that's what i'm really trying to achieve through me too value wave i really love the word may i yeah. share at this point uh, when my husband was a young boy he had 11 cats with him it was a oh, wow he stay but wow. he had 11 cats and that uh, apparently one day while they were having lunch the cat decided to share its meal so he bought a dead rat and put it near at his feet <laughs> so he was sharing his own meal so that has become the legend Lovely. here that's nice uh, as far as both books are concerned because both were written at different uh, times of uh, time frames of your life and with different 
in a mindset so which was yeah. more difficult to write uh, what parts of each book were very difficult to write and what came very easy and why was it so so mystery in malbar cottage was a breeze i told you i the, the, the book just got written okay it was just it just came out so naturally and even when i read it now i realize it's such an easy book in the sense it's such a smooth flowing book when i look yeah. back and realize it's a very natural book there's no pressure to put in incidents to make to help solve the mystery it's just a very natural book and i really love the the ease with which it folded unfolded yeah. mithu on the other half was difficult because we you know making anything simple for anyone especially for children is difficult and the theme of this book is that it's uh, it has uh, the kind of uh, subjects and topics i've handled in the book in the different stories are adult subjects for example marriage caste system inclusivity rich poor you know that kind of a thing uh, hatred uh, go governance you know where jingya actually takes a meeting and he's trying to influence the minds of people so these are actually all adult reflections uh, of something that could happen in the children's lives later on in life so it's a it's a pre introduction to what's awaiting them actually you know because that's the world out there it's the real world out there and at the same time i didn't want them to get scared okay because that's reality after all so i had to simplify these uh, these issues in our lives or these problems in our life and put them in such a way that mithu can solve them easily you know like he removes the block he turns uh, he turns uh, the bully into a you know a little uh, how should i call it a little <laughs> no no he turns the bully into a, what's the opposite of bully uh, a scared booby okay so oh, what mithu does is inculcate a lot of confidence in people okay where there is a crippled the handicapped boy who feels he can look after a kitten or there's another boy who's got anger issues and he is scared to take on a kitten because he feels he might hurt the True. kitten so mithu inculcates this confidence in people without preaching and finding these stories and writing them or getting the kittens adopted for that ma matter you know finding the right people for the kittens or protecting the dogs from people like jingya so all these issues are very adult issues and to simplify them for children was a task for me without being preachy so i think that was the most difficult part in writing the book however i enjoyed every minute of it but you know the funnily speaking how difficult is uh, you've written across for various age groups how difficult it is to write for children when compared to the adults it's it is very difficult does it get its due respect yeah because you see that you, when i was a child i was a very simple child you know today's children are different creatures yes. <laughs> i want <wouldn't> to be different now oh, yeah i i was like i was such a simpleton and and such a, a trustworthy a believing obedient child i used to believe everything told to me i was told that santa claus is real until the eighth standard i believed that santa claus was real and you know we we used to celebrate christmas at home and santa claus used to come 24th night we used to hang our stockings because i was in a christian school and and for till 8th standard which was must be about 15 years from the time i was 6 7 or 10 years so i used to believe that santa claus actually used to come and put you know gifts in my stockings until one fine day one of my school friends decided to burst the bubble and said what nonsense it's your mom doing everything and i cried and cried and cried because that was the the biggest disillusionment of my life i can't imagine today's kids believing that there is a santa claus you know it's just not they know too much they are exposed to so much they will not believe you if you tell them there's a santa claus there's a fairy there's they won't believe it unless they are really very young i mean maybe 4 or 5 but by the time they're 6 7 they know everything about the world and i know because there are so many kids in my lane who teach me things every day and i'm thinking are these kids or are they my parents or you know mm -hmm. grandparents i feel misfit in their world yeah. so having said that it's when you look at that target audience and you think of writing for them it's not going to be easy because you already know so much so you can't write down to them you can't write up to them you have to write along with them you know so that they can read it and that is why it is difficult just now simple we got locked out of it hello i can hear you anupama Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm. So you can. Sorry. We can hear you. No problem. You are the devil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I I got so good. <laughs> we can so, hear you. 
Okay. Don't worry, they, they can edit that out. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, God, <laughs> please edit it out. I'm supposed not supposed to say that. It's okay. That's okay. It's That's okay. the language children would probably have picked up by now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think the second, third grade are saying it already. Exactly. <laughs> Goodness. I think that's a build up to the answer to the question that I asked you anyways. Yeah. I'm so sorry about this. Okay, I'm gonna add this to um if any of the characters of other like you know, there are four characters, you know, very individualistic characters in Malabar Cottage and, and Mitwa uh, himself is a very endearing cat. So if they were to be having a spin-off, each character would would it have a standalone spin-off? If so, which character would you prefer? Um, well, in I think definitely in Mystery at Malbar Cottage, it would be Fulki. Yes. Uh, she's a she's a very uh, she's a very, very different kind of a character, you know, has her own personality. Uh, and she goes against everything that is right and proper for girls in society. She's not necessarily tomboyish, but she's got these gypsy looks, you know, and she believes in reading the crystal ball and she's a firm believer of whatever she follows. She's got these hobbies every summer, you know, so, and she's a very independent personality. And I'm sure if I just take full key and create a story around her, they'll be very exciting and very That's fun. True. Yeah. So I think full key is one character. And in uh, Mid 2, I think it would definitely be Krishna. Because I've put him like on the sidelines because Mithu is the main character. And uh, I think Krishna would definitely be yeah. his side of the story of how he raises the cat and the difference and the influence of the cat on his life would definitely be Krishna. Yeah. Do you do you see uh, Mithu coming back to Manas, uh, um, uh, homeland, homeland from Manas Puri? <laughs> it's a very difficult question because he's got he's kind of set out on a path which is so difficult yeah. <laughs> with an impossible path but Mitu is a magical kitten and you never know uh, what he's going to do he may he may go back to homeland he may get frustrated for all you know <laughs> but I think he's in love with Krishna and yeah. I think it's leaving Krishna which is his now major issue yeah. I think yeah and as you said, Pulki is my favorite. Next best is uh, Samir. This is, you know, I hope he grows yes. up into a great chef or something, solving great yes, mysteries. Yes. So there I've tried to break a stereotype, you know, because uh, I, I do believe that, I mean, in every book you see, there are always girls who cook and, yeah. and boys who eat. And not just now, not, not just through this book, but even when I was a producer at Balchitravani, when I was a children's television producer, this is like, I'm talking about, 15 years ago, I had a series called Kara and Kha, Kara and Kha, meaning prepare and eat. And there were about four or five anchors who were children and all of them were boys. Mm -hmm. So the message 15, 16, more, almost 20 years ago was that boys have to be independent. They have to learn to cook. No matter who's in their life, mothers, sisters, wives, no matter who's in their life, they must know cooking skills it's an important part and all the anchors were actually taught to cook in the studio and they actually did 15 20 minute programs of cooking different you know dishes for the children and we got a fantastic feedback for it so this is a this is a kind of a takeoff uh spin-off from there where i believe that samir had to be a cook you know he had to enjoy cooking and why not so that, that, that was a little breaking of the stereotypes here and samir will definitely be a good chef one day yes here in this, uh, I don't know if it's a stereotype. My uh, son is a great cook, completely house trained. Super. And my daughter oh, so is my husband. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's good. Good for her. <laughs> my husband's a good cook too. So I think uh, the world's changing. Yeah. How do you think the, I mean, uh, as you said, uh, we are always trying to, uh, you know, bombard the children with all sorts of knowledge and we are, you know, bombarding them with the abundance of uh, wisdom that we have gathered. So yeah. how should the authors go about embedding uh, messages uh, without, uh, you know, ja without coming across as preachy? Is there a better way to do rather than, you know, uh, how do you, uh, what is the best way to do that? I think through actions, by setting an example, I think that's the best way to do it. 
If you want to teach kindness, be kind. If you want to be forgiving, teach forgiving, be forgiving. If you want to, you know, spread love, peace, compassion, do that. Step out of your house and, and show children this is how it's done. I think preaching is not going to lead any, anywhere, you know. People, kids are smart enough to understand uh, real from fake. You know, if you're preaching, be kind. And if you're not being kind to the dog outside your house, you're immediately contradicting your own actions. So I think you have to practice what you preach. And when it comes from your heart, you don't need uh, books. You don't need anything. Your children will automatically follow your example. Um, uh, the, both the books have very endearing pets. And, uh, but yes. funnily, there are people who are you know, scared of them, and who, like Mrs. Fernando or uh, even uh, Panna, the caretaker of Malbar Cottage, who, you know, in mock horror, she keeps exclaiming. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So have the you? I know you have had so many pets across the years. Have the pets of have your pets ever come uh, in the way of your work? Anyways, in any way, I'm sure they wouldn't have. But if there are any any incidents, no way. <laughs> no, 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 never. In fact, they have been my biggest inspiration uh, in my writing. For example, my daughter Tuggy. You know, Tuggy was my daughter for 13 years. My black dog, I don't know, you can see her here. Ah. Yeah. She is, <laughs> she is Tuggy and uh, I wrote at least 10 books in her presence and she was my muse and she would come and sit on my feet and, and give me so much inspiration and I always wrote, you know, with her at my feet. So all my, all the animals, like I told you, Mitu was inspiration from a real cat or Sheena, my daughter, uh, has inspired my book called The Dog Train of Peace. So for me, dogs are an inspiration, uh, animals are an inspiration, and they have never, ever hindered me in any way, never. If you were to meet any of the characters that you have written across, there's so many of them, who would you like to meet and why? And the oh. second, there's a second part to this question. Do you believe that we have angels like Aha and uh, Arkia within us? and also villainous characters like Jingia and the, I don't want to give away the name of uh, Malabar Cottage also within us. Yeah. Uh, and if so, yes, what happens? How do we solve that? Uh, whom would I like to meet? Um, you mean between these two books? Yes. Uh, Malabar Cottage. Oh, in those two books, I'd, I'd like to meet all of them, uh, but definitely I'd like to meet uh, uh, Fulki because she is more um, a reflection of what I was as a child. Uh, you know, just in the first chapter, I think I've explained that one of her hobbies was uh, making uh, flower vases out of records. Okay, and I used to do that as a child. You know, in huh. growing up, I used to collect records. There were lots of records in my house. You know, those records which were played on the, yes, I don't yes. know, have you even seen the gramophone? The, the, the record here? Nice. Ones, yes, so you ones. put it on that and it plays music. Okay, so those were the records. So while, you know, they started, cassettes came in and those records got extinct, I collected all of them and I used to put them in boiling water and then they used to mold. And then I used to mold them and turn them into flower vases and paint on them and give them to everyone. That was my hobby. Oh. So Fulki is actually a reflection of who I was as a child, uh, you know, changing hobbies and all that. So I would like to, I guess, go back and meet myself and tell myself a few things, uh, you know, don't do this or do this or whatever I want to. But yes, I'd definitely like to meet Fulki again. And um, coming to Jingya and Abha Arya, well, I'd love to meet Abha Arya more in real life. But I do believe that 90%, I mean, don't go, uh, don't go by my 90%, but I do believe that 90% of the people in this world are in some form or the other Jingyas. <clears throat> so it's not necessarily so much hatred, but I do believe that collectively, you know, when we look at the world as a whole, 90% do represent Chingyas because we've really spoiled the world with our hate for each other, with our differences, by working on our differences, by spreading those that hatred to others, by not learning to live in coexistence or in harmony, by hating animals, by you know, using them in experiments, by using them for so many other things where it's not needed, by being cruel. So I think Jingya is a representation of that 90% uh, 
I could be wrong in the percentage, but I do believe 90% is, of the world is like that. I think that's what he represents. And definitely amongst the 90%, there are more worse jingyas than I can even talk about. So definitely jingya does represent that. On the other hand, there's this 10% who are really angels. And I think it's that 10% who keeps the world alive today. The world is existing because of that 10%. Small, I could be wrong, it could be 20, it could be 30. Like I said, I have don't have a proper record, but in my mind, it's 90 and 10. And I think 10% angels are definitely there and they, they are kind, they're loving people, they go out of their way to help people. Uh, they make sure that you know others are happy. Uh, they will help the needy. Uh, they will make sure there's food, water, whatever you want to say for the animals, for human beings. So definitely these angels, uh, I think if you find such an angel, hold on to that angel because there are very few of them in the world. I hope whoever there is listening to this, please, please, this is such an important message that is coming across. All we have, the angels and demons are within us. It is up to us who we want to grow up into and who we want to destroy within us. That is a fantastic answer, Manjali. Thank you so much. If I were to ask you among the contemporary Indian authors who are writing to writing for children, uh, who would you say is your favorite and uh, why? And what genre particularly would you like to recommend? Anupama, this is really very difficult to answer, okay? <laughs> it's a difficult answer. Because I'll tell you why. Because first of all, uh, honestly, I'm writing all the time and not reading. Because I think I've done all my reading in my growing years. Yes. So I, I think I divided my life into uh, life as a reader and life as a writer. So uh -huh. the kind of reader I was, I don't think I left any book unopened. You know, uh -huh. I, I, I think I just read like mad. For the first half of my life, I just read and read and read from biographies, autobiographies, science and fiction and everything, you name it. Okay. And then suddenly the change would happen when I just got into writing and that's it. The writer in me took over. Uh, I'm a little ashamed to say this, but my reading has really gone down. But having said that, um, I can talk about the subjects more than the kind of writing. I I love your, uh, your Facebook posts. Okay? Oh, I think so there's much. a lot of there's a lot of depth in them. There's a lot of maturity in them. And uh, I, I'm sure that goes into your writing too, uh, because I haven't read it, but I know that the last book you brought out was, uh, 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 what was it? It's about mythology and stories from, uh, right? Yeah, so I read some parts of it and I loved it. Thank you so I, much. If I have made to... my day. Made my day today, my No, goodness. but I do like it. No, most welcome, but I, it's the truth and I, I love your Facebook posts too. And I read the short stories you put up. I may not like them every time, but I do go through them and, and there's some thinking in my head saying, oh, this is what she meant and this is how she's brought it. And that's about it. So I do think about that. Oh my God, I'm going to be the... flying in air today. I'm not going to be on the ground. Oh, Thank on. you so much. I'm sure lots of people have told you this. this is uh, and I think for me, uh, not Indian, but because I haven't, read many children books in India with Indians because I told you they are mostly uh, knowledge based books like uh, you know history of this and uh, fantastic scientists of the country and you know that kind of research based books which I don't think I'm interested in yeah. so I think for me the best children series that came out was definitely the Harry Potter series yeah. I think yes and uh, call her contemporary or maybe she's written that many years ago but for me I don't think I've ever read a book a book after book after book after book, all the seven books, one after the other, and they gripped me, uh, you know, the world of fantasy, the values that came out, everything about those books, that whole series, I think kind of literally, literally told me how books should be written, literally. I mean, so it, it was in a way I, I was completely entertained. I was completely, uh, you know, involved in the characters and what is going to happen to Harry Potter. I was scared. I don't think I've been scared of any book in my whole life or any character being hurt in my whole life. You know, not even nothing. But for Harry Potter, I was worried. You know, I was I hoped he would he would survive. You know, so those kind of things, the kind of feelings that the emotions that were evoked to the books, I think that is the series I would still hold on the on the topmost level. I would ask a slightly unrelated question, considering that yeah. our audience is uh, 
children but uh, in on all, uh, all honesty is it fair to cancel out an author for his or her own personal beliefs rather than separate the art from the person because you know you mentioned jk rowling and suddenly people are not taking to her very kindly because of her yeah, because of her comments opinion. yeah yeah so, I, I i seriously feel that art is different from the art maker because i think all of us through whatever medium we use we're actually just channels yes. you know i don't think i've written any of the books myself manjiri prabhu i think i was used as a channel by some muse by some universe and it flew out of me if you if you think i'm practicing everything i'm i'm putting in my books it would be a it would be a wrong thing to say i don't think i practice everything i preach in the book either i'm a different person from what i write in the books because we are all channels so you cannot you cannot judge a writer from what he or she has written and you cannot judge the book from the from what the writer says so i think these are two separate entities and they should be kept separate thank you thank you so much uh, i think uh, the moderator uh, the lady has uh, just said that we are running out of time and we can you know i can continue asking you questions and questions but... and i can keep answering <laughs> it has been such a wonderful yeah. this thing but i have yeah. one, i do have one uh, last question maria if yeah. you allow me um yes ma'am sure sure what is would you give to the budding young authors who are listening to us and uh, what also would you tell them to keep in mind as they grow up into adults because life will happen so what should they do before life takes over uh for budding authors you mean children authors or yes. you mean aspiring yes. authors children budding. authors okay children okay so um well i would tell children first read read as i mean it's a it's a very common advice anyone would give them and a very natural advice read as much as you can because the more you read the better writer you become it's a very simple logic i mean i never trained i never went to a creative writing course or a college or anything writing just happened naturally to me because of all the reading i had done my education was through my reading i learned the craft through my reading i met characters and writers and writing styles and narratives through the books i read so reading is going to be your natural teacher if you want to be a writer just read i mean that's the first advice i would give secondly um i would say as you're growing up and stepping into the adult world i would say grow a thick skin okay because not just because you're going to be going to face a lot of rejections in life uh, through your, uh, for your writing for the things that you do a lot of lack of appreciation uh, if you're lucky you will get it but majority of the times you have to really struggle and you have to have that thick skin to face the world thirdly in this process please do not forget uh, to hold on to that inner child of you okay to the love and compassion that we all are born with hold on to that because that is going to create the same energy around you the more loving and compassionate you are uh, the more you hold on to that inner happiness and joy the child like joy the more of that you will find around you and the more of joy and happiness you will find in life so i think those are the three things i would like to tell children you might have said this for children i think these are great takeaways even for adults on any given day any given yes, so thank you so much yes. thank you maria please if you have any questions uh yes ma'am i have ma'am you have written a lot about animals so what is your experience on that how oh, that would make, take another full session maria but to to <laughs> explain in a very very uh, concise manner i think dogs more than animals let me say dogs and cats are my life uh, i they are my gurus they have taught me a lot in life they have taught me about humanity about uh, coexistence uh, i've written a book called the dog train of peace like i said before which is a non fiction book and that book explains my learnings and teachings in life with dogs i do believe that, that if you're kind and compassionate to dogs and cats and and animals around you you will be creating a life of abundance peace 
and and uh, pleasure around you i think that's it so my take is uh, for animals live with them learn from them take them along with you and life is going to be beautiful for you thank you ma'am thank you so much it was a great session really it was a great session thank you thank you so much ma'am vanjini ma'am and anupama ma'am it was a pleasure being a part of this session it will be a great pleasure to read this book our audience can please get their copies of the book from the link provided sure. in a description or visit a crossword store in your city can you see it? oh sorry can you see it yeah i think it's the images are done okay anyway these are the books <laughs> Please get As an adult, it. I have read these books, and I suggest please go ahead right away and pick them up. Yes, thank you. I once again thank you both and the audience in front of the system. Get ready for the quiz. Get ready for the quiz based on this session, and visit www.oclfnagpur.com to participate in a quiz and win exciting gifts and prizes. A gigantic Orange City Literature Festival will be back in November 2022 in Nagpur, the city of oranges. Get ready for the physical fest in the coming winter, attending awesome sessions and interacting with your favorite author. Thank you all.